man, did you see me shoot that dog? He's <laughs> come down, he's landed it on the field. <laughs> in short vlog. Right, oh, I'm good. <laughs> sticks. <laughs> Alright, welcome to Neil and Nar Vlogs. <laughs> Welcome to a completely new tube introduction there. <laughs> Just did a bit of dog hunting in the backyard. <laughs> waiting to intro the vlog. Crying, he can't now focus on anything. This is a special vlog because after putting out the uh, blindfolded crossbar challenge, make sure you go check it out. Uh, we put a little snippet of myself over at Warrington Gymnastics Club, which is an amazing place, and I had an amazing day talking to all the guys. You and Tom. Really? Good state of screen. <laughs> and lots of people have been asking for the whole clip, everything that I did on that day. We got, I mean, it was two hours, so what we're going to do is we're going to try and pull out the best bits and give you around 10 minutes of the uh, presentation and speech that I did at Warrington Gymnastics Club, who's been asked for. So that's what we're going to do. Enjoy, enjoy it. I think the title fits very well. We might call this the YouTube sensation is not who you think is, because right. the intro is who you think you are. <laughs> <laughs> so that contrast between what's just happened in this speech, it'll blow your mind. Roll the clip. My name is Neil Wilson. Um, if you don't know, I am Niall Wilson's father. Um, I'm also a very recent self-proclaimed YouTube sensation. So from my perspective, um, I am Niall Wilson's father, but I'm not just Niall Wilson's father, okay? I have a daughter called Joanna who I am very proud of, extremely proud of. I have a wife called Sally, and I have to say, when Mandy and Jan gave me the opportunity to talk for an hour uninterrupted, when you live with Sally, that's an amazing, amazing opportunity. So I said, yes, I will definitely do that. What do you say? Follow your dreams, don't you? So if you say to your children, follow your dreams, and I'm telling my children to follow their dreams, I thought, well, it's about, about time I started following my dreams. Tom, this is a cameraman. So Tom is part of my current development because he's my daughter's boyfriend. <laughs> I am here for the next hour, 50 minutes, to tell you my story, our story, our story as a family, yeah? What we did, how, how something triggered me to change the way that I thought when Niall was growing up. I, I never took Niall to gymnastics because I thought he was going to be an Olympic athlete. All the way through was build a nice person. That's all we tried to do, build a nice person. Because the key thing for me is, what, what you do is, you build the person and then build the gymnast. What do you think builds a good gymnast? What, si what type of words would you say build a great gymnast? Determination, dedication, resilience, happiness, fun, yeah, enjoying. They're all the words, aren't they? Build a great gymnast. Shout out words that build a great person. It's exactly the same, isn't it? There is no difference between what builds a great gymnast and what builds a great person. There is no difference whatsoever. It's all the same words. The words that we use to build a great person don't only help in gymnastics. They help in school. They help with relationships. They help with, you know, what it is that they want to do in the rest of their lives. So building a great person with all the words that we use are ultimately what build a great gymnast, somebody that's great from going to school perspective, exams, you know, anything that they want to do. That's what building a great person is about. Hand up anyone in the room who believes they're like their parents. Wow, look at all the hands. So hands up everyone in the room who thinks their kids are gonna be like you. <laughs> You're like your parents, your kids are gonna be like you. So what we invested for the future, ultimately is gonna produce an adult, isn't it? We didn't think we were gonna have an Olympic athlete. Part of the journey as well has the downs, so many downs. When I was eight years old, he had an elbow disease. Yeah, he's had wrist surgery, he's had ankle surgery. At the age of 12, we had to sit him down and tell him he had a broken back. They keep happening and they are all part of the journey. They are extremely important and I would argue they are more important than they are. Because how we deal with setbacks is, is what makes us part of what we are. I was still taking Niall to gymnastics for fun and enjoyment. And the thing that I always said to Niall, always said every single time did you enjoy it did you have fun handprints in concrete in 2003 I was gonna put some concrete I thought it'd be quite nice to you know press the kids hands in the concrete 15 years ago I put Niles hands in the concrete and I put Niles name and I said what do you what do you want me to write on this piece of concrete Niles said I want you to write Olympic gymnastics I'm going to the Olympics dad so what do you think my reaction was as a parent <laughs> Yeah, exactly right. I can feel the vibe in the room. I was like, can a certain part of me went, 
Yeah, right. Yeah, it's natural, isn't it? Yeah, right. We've already said, haven't we, follow your dreams. I'm not going to be a dream buster and say, you that is not something that you can achieve. But I didn't all of a sudden change from bringing up somebody to be a nice person and a nice child because that's what I wanted them to be, to thinking, oh, right, I'm bringing up an Olympic gymnast now. But, you know, from a dream perspective, Niall unequivocally, 100%, when he put his hands in the concrete, he believed he was going to go to the Olympics. We could explore that in terms of his belief, his attitude to what he wanted to achieve. Ultimately, behaviour and performance go through your beliefs and attitude and your feelings every single time. And every single time, your values out trump your behaviour. You know, as Niall was growing up as well, we, we felt that isolation is dangerous. And what, and what I mean by that is if we suddenly only 100% focus on gymnastics, that's dangerous. Isolation affects relationships. H who thinks language is important? Yeah, positive. Yeah. Encouraging. Encouraging. And everything I'm telling you about is my perception of growing up. So I got, I got this email, things that your parents used to say to you. Children should be seen and not heard. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Don't show off. I spoke to Sally about it and I, what we're saying to the kids, it's not right, it's wrong. Which wasn't without its issues because I told now I said, show off. I want to hear you. Speak out, I want to talk to you, show off. We use a negative phrase and want a positive outcome. Don't run, don't spill it. And the way the brain works, right? The brain is only listening to the action. Don't run, don't run is a classic. At our school, we used to have a no running policy. Why do you have a no running policy? It's ridiculous, isn't it? So what happens then is when you have a no running policy, kids don't know what to do. Because what you, you haven't told them what you want. You've just told them what you don't want. So then kids go like that, don't they? They try to walk. They try to walk as quick as they can, which isn't running. Why isn't the policy just walk? You know, why, the, why isn't the language be, be careful with that? And there's all sorts of other language that we use. I also read somewhere that by the time a child is five years old, get this, they have heard the word no 50,000 times. So we're reinforcing no, we're reinforcing don't, we're reinforcing you can't. There's certain things, aren't there, where children can't do it. You know, and the, and the I can'ts where I just can't do it now are different from the I can'ts because I don't want to. So from an I can't perspective, sometimes it means I just can't right now. It's always about doing things differently and as much as you can using positive language and not using negative language when you want a positive outcome. So when Joanna got a bit older, she says, I'm gonna do A-levels and get three A-stars. I'm a, okay. Okay, that's fine. You know, what do I need to do to support? Niall was on a gymnastics journey. And the, and the challenge as a parent can be, we measure against perfection. And so what we measure against is we measure whether, whether or not you can do it. Can it be done? Rather than measuring the progress. Niall has lost more than he's won. And part of that losing is development and learning and understanding what happened. And, then, and also measuring against the progress that he's making towards what he wants to achieve. What he wants the outcome to be. What Niall wanted to achieve is called inevitable dream. You know what your dream is. So basically you write your goals and achievement down. This is about performance success, not about how you develop your child. But we've said, haven't we already, how you develop your child in early, early days and what you do, what they learn, ultimately goes into adult. And the performance success success is exactly the same as being a nice person. Niall goes to the Olympics and everything that he wanted to achieve at the Olympics, he wrote down on a piece of paper and six months later it happened, exactly as he'd written it down. I want to line up in the all-round final with the top six gymnasts in the world, look around, feel the atmosphere and think, I belong here. Second one he wrote was, I smash my high bar in the team final, I land the dismount, I put my arms out, I look up and I receive the thing of the crowd. It happened, they both happened. There was no outcome for Niall at the Olympics. It was about individual performance and what he wanted to achieve. Niall's was all about team. What he did for that team in the Olympic final. There's a route to behavior and a route to performance. They're exactly the same route. It starts with your beliefs and it, and it, start, it actually underpinned by your conditioning. Conditioning is what you're being told, what you think every single day, yeah? Who conditions kids? Yeah. Every adult, what else? Social media, parent. The biggest condition of kids is the kids themselves. They condition themselves because that little voice inside their head says, compare myself to other people and can't achieve it. That drives the belief, which drives the attitude and ultimately the feelings. Now, 
route to performance is through feelings. You have to attach emotion and feelings to what you want. But ultimately, the route to achieving it has to be attached with, think what your friends will say, think how good it'll look, think how you'll feel when you've done it, think of the emotion when you tell your mum and dad. If you attach emotion and feelings to what you're trying to achieve, then it's more powerful. It's a more powerful association with what you want to do. When Niall wrote down, he's got an emotional attachment of, I feel the crowd and I can see what's happening. You know, with Niall and with Joanna, we always supported them to be the best they can be. I think that's really important from a child's perspective and a development perspective is to be the best they can be. That doesn't necessarily mean the best. On any given day, you can be your best and somebody may be better than you and it's inevitable, it's gonna happen. But if you have been the best you can be, that's where pride comes from. Niall started doing gymnastics competitively from club through to British, through to Europeans, through to Worlds, through to Olympics. Every time he came out, I did two things. Every single time, did you enjoy it? Yes, I love you. Hug, did you enjoy it? I love you. All the way through. Because it's emo the emotional attachment with me is about, it's still about 22 years old, him enjoying it. And the reason it's still about him enjoying it is because I know if he's enjoying it, he's a nice person. And I know if he's a nice person, He's got all them things that we said earlier. And if he's got all them things he said earlier, we know all them things make you brilliant, don't they? So what do you see in that picture? Proud. I am not his coach. If I become his coach, he ain't got a dad, yeah? And he wants a dad. He wants me to be his dad. So I'm dad. I am hug, I love you. That's what I do. I don't review the performance or review what's happening in the gymnastics gym. We mentioned pride earlier and I wrote this this down. People, people come and say to me, uh, you must be so proud of Niall. Niall went to the Olympics, you must be so proud. He just won five Commonwealth medals, you must be so proud. And I'm, you know, it gets a bit embarrassing because the way it's delivered to me is I can never be as proud as my kids as you are because he's the Olympic with, you know, this outcome focused thing with five medals. Sally, my wife, she delivers, the, in Leeds they call it Jimmy Kins. Similar here, the kids come in and they have a chair each and then the first thing they do is they do a show and tell and the last thing they do before they all finish is they sing a song. So Charlie, who's in Sally's Jimmy Kins class, wouldn't sing the song. And each week, Sally would say, Charlie, are you singing this week? Seven weeks in a row. Eighth week, Charlie, are you singing the song? So gets in the circle, sings the song, whatever the song is, comes out, and as he's finished singing the song, mother walks in. Sally says to the mother, Charlie has sung the song. She burst into tears. So they're all crying and hugging. He sang a nursery rhyme. Now that that I described you is exactly the same as Niall winning an Olympic bronze medal. Being proud of your children is not about success, wealth or medals. Being proud of your children is about what they do on a day-to-day -day basis and what you do with them. And that's what I did with Niall and Joanna. Thank you so much for listening. I've, I've really enjoyed it and I hope you have. And yeah. yeah.